Hey everyone, I'm Andy and welcome to another episode of Easy Tiki Drinks. And today on the channel, we're gonna be making a Mai Tai with a very specific rum. A rum that is infamous, famous, hard to find. I don't know. We're gonna talk about one of the most talked about rums in the tiki world. Today, we're gonna be making a Mai Tai with Karuba. So, let's do this. So as we do on this channel, once in a while, I will make a Mai Tai with a very specific rum. And I do that because Mai Tais were originally created to showcase a 17 year old Ray and nephew rum. So they're a great vessel to showcase and highlight what rum can do. Similar to a daiquiri and what that can do for rum or a margarita for tequila or something like a paper plane for bourbon. These are all cocktails that are very spirit forward, I guess, although the Mai Tai is not spirit forward, but it does a great job of highlighting the spirit in it. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making a Mai Tai, the classic 1944 build, but instead of using a blend of rums or this rum or that rum, we're going to be using a very specific rum and that is Karuba, which is a dark Jamaican rum. So let's see what we need to build this cocktail. First, we're going to need a dark Jamaican rum, specifically Karuba. Then we're gonna need a dry curacao, orgia, demerara syrup, and lime juice. The dark Jamaican rum that I'm using is specifically Karuba. The dry curacao that I'm using is by Pierre Ferrand. All right, so this is the bottle that we're talking about. Karuba, Jamaica, Jamaican rum. There's 100% pot still Jamaican rum from Kingston. Now, it's also 40% ABV. Andy, what is a dark Jamaican rum? Why is this so important? Why is Karuba so important? Well, a dark Jamaican rum is a Jamaican rum that has been colored with molasses coloring. So normally this wouldn't be nearly as dark. I have a couple bottles on the back bar, which are similar, right? So another dark Jamaican rum that I have is the Worthy Park 109, which I've done in a Mai Tai before, and I will leave a link up here and then a link in the description below. I also have Smith & Cross, which is a aged Jamaican rum, but not a dark Jamaican rum. It does not have the molasses coloring. We then also have the Plantation Yamaka, Appleton 12. All of these are aged Jamaican rums. The difference is that these rums, the dark Jamaican rums, have a deep burnt sugar and caramel flavor that's coming from the coloring. And that complements and accents the ester profile that we get from typical Jamaican rums. So that's what make this, makes this so special. Now, why Karuba specifically? Why is it any different than Worthy Park 109? Well, Karuba was basically first. They've been around for a while, and while the blend has changed and the rum has changed, the Karuba we get nowadays, other bartenders have basically said is the secret ingredient to tiki cocktails. It adds a depth of flavor that we're not gonna get from regular aged Jamaican rums. The problem being is that distribution of this thing is limited. A lot of people have difficulty finding Karuba. In Massachusetts, I know of a couple places you can get it. So if you happen to live in Mass or you happen to be traveling through Mass, you wanna pick up a bottle, drop me a link or a comment. I will be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Anyway, I picked this bottle up as a sipper, actually. That's how good this is. If you like Jamaican rums, if you like the Hogo, the Esters, I highly recommend this because it's like mixing Smith & Cross with El Dorado 12, which is also the blend that Jim Hayward from Atomic Grog basically said complements or replicates the Kohala Bay that the Mai Kai used to use. In the same vein, this is the dark Jamaican rum. These are the types of rums that were around when Don the Beachcomber was mixing. So when we see recipes that call for dark Jamaican rums, what we're looking for is something like this. Now, if you don't get Karuba or Worthy Park 109, you 100% can use a blend of other rums, such as the Smith & Cross and El Dorado 12. That will work perfectly fine. But anyway, let's build this cocktail and sip on it because I can't wait. All right, so time to build this cocktail. We're gonna start with an ounce of lime juice as we do in Mai Tais. I've also seen Mai Tai spec with three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. So if you go with the three quarters ounce, it's gonna be a little bit on the sweeter side. And if that's what your palate prefers, by all means go for it. I like a more balanced cocktail where the tartness is just in line with the sweetness. So I always go with a full ounce. But if you feel like going with three quarters, go for it. Listen, it's your cocktail, do what you want. Now, 
Next up, we're gonna go with a quarter ounce of our Demerara syrup. Now again, I've seen recipes completely just negate the Demerara syrup and go all orgia, which is fine, but sometimes with certain orgias, it can be a little overpowering. So because of the orgia that I'm using, I'm going with a quarter ounce of my Demerara syrup to help round out the sweetness. Next up, I'm gonna be using a quarter ounce of my toasted orgia. This is my homemade orgia. It is a little bit more on the powerful side, which is why I go with a quarter ounce. But if you've got kind of like a more mellow orgia, then you might wanna go with a half ounce. But again, your cocktail, you do what makes you happy. I'm just here to give suggestions. Half, uh, quarter ounce of my toasted orgia. half ounce of our dry curacao. And last but not least, we're gonna need two ounces of our rum and specifically our Karuba. Now, I'm gonna say something and you're gonna say, well, Andy, that's awesome because you're using the same rum and wrong, I'm not. The Karuba that we have nowadays is different, but and around the 1950s, after the 17 ran out, after the 15 started uh, to run out for Trader Vic, and I'm talking about the 17 year old rum, 15 year old rum, they decided to start cutting the 15 year old rum. One of the rums that he cut it with is Karuba. Now again, the Karuba back then is different than the Karuba we have now, but just to make you aware of how important this rum has been throughout the history of the Mai Tai. So we need two ounces of our Karuba. I'm gonna grab some ice and put it into my large shaking tin. All right, move some stuff around. I'm gonna pour our cocktail right in, give it a nice little whack, and then we're gonna shake for about five to eight seconds. Crack this bad boy open. We'll grab our rocks glass, open pour right in. Grab some more ice to top it off with. All right, now I need to apologize again. I don't have mint. If you want the story behind it, I just did a video on my version of a breakfast Mai Tai where I talk about why I don't have mint and I'm shooting this episode right after that. So I'll leave a link up here and a description, uh, link in the comments in the description below. Uh, I just don't have mint. I'm a bad tiki bartender. Yell at me all you want. I just don't have it right now. I'm sorry. Anyway, we're gonna garnish with a lime wheel. And then since we don't have mint, I'm gonna go kind of kitschy, kitschy. I'm gonna go with a cocktail umbrella, just so there's a little bit more show to it. Place that right there. Grab our straw, put that right in. And there you have it, our Karuba Mai Tai. Let's give it a try. So that is a Jamaican funk bomb paired with rich, deep molasses and caramel notes. That is a bomb Mai Tai, that is so good. If you're the type of person that loves Jamaican rums and loves showing Jamaican rums in Mai Tais, I highly recommend go with Karuba. Like if you don't go a full two ounces, it's fine, but like find a way to add it to your blend because it is delicious, like delicious. And in fact, I actually use it in my house blend for my house Mai Tais, which if you're curious about what that blend is, drop a comment below, because if you guys would love to see how I make my own Mai Tais for myself, I'll be more than happy to show you. But if you don't care, then I won't. But if you'd like to see my Mai Tai blend, let me know. Anyway, that's it for today. We just made a Mai Tai with a specific rum that we talked about and why it's important, and it's rolling the, the history of the Mai Tai throughout time. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Go on over to the channel, smash that subscribe button, click that little notification bell so you know when I drop new videos, which typically are two to three a week. Yeah, that's right. I'm doing two to three week videos a week. We're doing a Mai Tai Monday, a Tiki Tuesday, and then we're doing a short on Thursday. So anyway, that's it for today. Follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, at Easy Tiki Drinks. And until next time, I don't have anything else to say. You know the deal. 
Take it easy.